All right, so today we will be talking about the traditional plank versus the feet elevated plank, and specifically why the feet elevated plank is more effective at training the musculature of the core and hips, and also how the feet elevated plank variations tie into training the core globally through the anatomical slings. Traditional planks are a very effective exercise for training the core strength of beginner athletes. But as athletes become more experienced, it begins to lose its effectiveness. And this is because when performing a traditional plank, the center of mass is located in the lower body. So for the athletes to create balance within their body, they tend to shift their weight towards their torso, as seen in the video. This leads to the shoulder girdle becoming the limiting factor of the exercise. I don't know about the rest of you, but often when I program planks for my athletes, they tend to say that all they do is all they feel is in their shoulders and they feel nothing in their core. So if this is the case, are we even stressing the musculature of the core and hips like we intended to? The reason why I prefer feet elevated planks over traditional planks is because when performing a feet elevated plank, the athlete's center of mass is shifted towards their upper body. So for them to create balance within their body, they need to shift their weight towards their lower body, which in turn recruits more musculature from the core and hips. Also with these variations, as you'll see later in the presentation, you can isolate specific muscles that are often overlooked in typical strength conditioning programs. And also, you can train the core globa globally through targeting each of the four myofascial slings, which are very important for all dynamic movement. When training for core strength comes to mind, I think about training all the musculature that is attached to the hips and tying it to how it helps us perform all dynamic movement. And that's where the myofascial slings come in, which are slings of tissue that run through our body that are comprised of different muscles, fascia, and ligaments that work to create stability and mobility in dynamic movement. They are important because if there is a weak link within your kinetic chain, it will either lead to an energy leakage, which results in loss of power and poor performance, or it could lead to a compensation pattern that could lead to injury down the road. That's why globally training the core is essential. There are four major myofascial slings that I will cover. The first is your posterior oblique sling, which runs from your lat to your contralateral glute. And its primary function is providing stability and producing force during all gait patterns, including jogging, walking, and sprinting. Next is the anterior oblique sling. It runs from your external and internal oblique to your contralateral adductor, and its primary function is to the transfer of force between the lower and upper body during rotational base movements. Then there is the deep longitudinal sling. It runs from the erector spinae and multifidus to the biceps femoris and anterior tibialis. It is responsible for horizontal force production and ground reaction forces during all gait patterns. Lastly is the lateral sling, which runs from the quadratus lumborum to the glute. And it is very important for stabilize, stabilization and balance in all frontal plane movements. For the last part of the presentation, I'll be going over the four variations of the feet elevated planks. The first is the groin plank. This exercise trains both hip adduction and anterolateral flexion through locally targeting the muscles of the groin and the oblique, while also globally training the anterior oblique sling. As you can see during the exercise, the oblique and the contralateral adductor are both active, making this an essential exercise for rotational based athletes. Next is the glute plank. This exercise trains both hip abduction and anterolateral flexion by locally targeting the muscles of the glute 
and it globally trains the lateral sling by stressing the stabilizing muscles in the outer portion of the hip. This exercise is a great addition to any strength conditioning program because it trains the athlete in the frontal plane, which is often overlooked in the weight room. This is the feet elevated prone plank. It trains both hip flexion and anti-extension by locally targeting the lycus, psoas, and rectus femoris. It globally trains the deep long longitudinal swing by enforcing stability from the foot all the way to the shoulder, which is very important for preventing energy loss every time the foot strikes the ground. Last is the feet elevated supine plank. It trains both hip extension and anti-flexion by targeting the muscles of the glute and the hamstring. The supine plank globally trains the anterior oblique swing due to both the lat and contralateral glute being active when the exercise is being performed. To add complexity to this exercise, it can be performed either single leg, single arm, or both. In an upcoming video, I'll be going over both regression and progressions for all these exercises so you have options to fit any level athlete's needs.